Well, come over here. Say hi to everybody. Yes, do your arabesque. Very good. You gonna hang out? We can do. We always bring her to the studio because she gets lonely, right? Hmm. What are you gonna do? You gonna sit? <laughs> you gonna sit right there, perched up? Okay, I gotta work. Elsa, ladies and gentlemen, our loyal <laughs> mascot. Okay, so let's start. I'm gonna start with a question. Very, very good question. Very timely question because this relates directly to the program that we're about to begin offering you. Okay, so let me just get to the body of the message, past the compliments and whatnot, which I appreciate, by the way. So I have a question about strength. Does a ballet dancer add strength throughout their career or at a certain point are they just maintaining the strength that they have? I ask because you talk about only building muscle through ballet training. And I understand how a dancer could add a lot of muscle with ballet training alone, but wouldn't that muscle gain plateau at a certain point? And then he, it goes on to use the analogy of weightlifting, right? So how does a weightlifter or an athlete of, of various sorts continue to, grain, to, to gain strength? So obviously a weightlifter, you add more weight. An athlete, maybe you'll wear a weight vest and a variety of ways in which they continue to develop themselves. So this is a very intelligent question. Um, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure who this person is, but they should definitely be in the profession with this kind of reasoning. Okay, so let's, let's talk about it. There's a couple things there. So here's how to look at, at ballet training. Big picture. It isn't about gaining muscle specifically. It isn't that. Look at ballet more like this. It's more like a sculptor. Let's say you have a block of marble and so sculpting obviously you have this design in the mind. I'm not a sculptor. And it's, 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 a, it's a taking away of material to reveal this beautiful sculpture. That's more like what we're doing in ballet. So what we're doing is we are shaping the muscle. We're reshaping the muscle. So uh, fundamentally, here's how ballet differs from every other known type of human physical activity, as far as I know. We begin, that's what the fundamentals are, with a full body redesign, beginning with the hips. We have to redesign the hips, and because of that, we have to redesign everything else. That's the project. And that has to occur before we do anything like dancing, for real. In I'm talking about classical dance, obviously. So it's about reshaping the body, right? And it, it's not just for aesthetic reasons. That, that's just the product of it. It's, it's for functional mechanical reasons. It's, it's to get that quality of movement and ultimately to prepare the body to dance. So ballet class, here's where <laughs> there's some misunderstanding in, in, in the ballet community in the world. Ballet class, daily class, is not about dancing. It's about preparing your body and your mind to dance. So it's ultimately to prepare you for rehearsal and for performing. The class itself is not about dancing itself, right? So what ballet class is, is it's about building that, there's a minimum level of strength and coordination that a person needs in order to do anything like a combination, to, to execute any of the ballet steps. Okay. in any sort of dancing manner. So the fundamentals, which is what we're talking about, is advanced ballet. This is the advanced part from the teaching side, especially, but even from the learning side, like this is where you educate a person, right? And there's, in, in ballet, the, the, and this is a long time problem, so much attention is paid to the body, to the muscles, to the body, and almost nothing to the mind. And this is an, an ass backward way to do this. You have to, ed what your mind understands is what your body is going to do. This is number one. 
So I spend a lot more time educating people's mind, pointing things out, showing you how to see things, than concerned with how your foot looks or the, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so to address the question directly. So it isn't about building muscle, although that is what is happening. It, it's, it's developing the muscle in a very particular way. So ballet training is, if we're kind of aiming towards the profession, let's say, it's not preparing your body to do a lot of different things well, although it, it absolutely could be applied that way. Ballet training is specific to do ballet. That's the design. So we, we have centuries of this evolution to get to the point where we have had this understanding and have kind of lost it, but we're bringing it back, good. So here's how strength building works. There's two components to it. There's there's the refining of strength and coordination. And they go, they're really the same thing at a certain point, but maybe it's helpful to, to break them apart. So the more coordination you get, so the, so the more precise you initiate every single aspect of movement, right? So I'm talking about you're standing in first position, let's just say. Let's say you're placed. You already understand what placement is. And you're able to hold your placement while you move. That's what ballet technique is. You hold your placement and while you move a leg, let's say, right? Two legs if it's a plie. So it's an isometric way of training. That's why it isn't about building muscle per se in, in the normal way of thinking about it. So the more precisely you understand in your mind how to initiate that movement builds strength quicker in that particular, it's more efficient. Now, the more efficient strength you build, the more coordinated you can become, the more precise you can execute the technique. And so what you get is this, I'm more coordinated, therefore I'm stronger. I'm stronger, therefore I'm more coordinated. And this is the process that goes on for your entire life in dance, that never stops. And there's this real misunderstanding that when somebody graduates a school, uh, that somehow they're trained. No, that, I mean, that, that doesn't even map onto the recent, relatively recent history of ballet. Okay, so if you look at, uh, let, let's take Vasiliev and Maximova, right? Vladimir Vasiliev and Yekaterina Maximova, as a couple, my favorite couple, I think. When they're young, 19, 18, we, we have some footage of this too. Maybe let's just, we can run it in the background here where I talk. So there's, let's look at them now. So this is them young, right? Right out of school, basically, fresh into the theater. And they're well put together. They're, they've got training and strength and coordination. But if you look at her, because point work, see women have an additional burden with their technique because of point. Now in some ways point work is, makes technique more pure, but it's, it's more difficult to get there. That's another conversation. But you see when she goes to point and off point, especially down from point, so through straight legs to the plie, you see that there's this dip, right? She her, drops her weight onto her legs because she's young and not so coordinated yet. Now take a look at them, I don't know what it is, 15 or 20 years later, so they're in their late 30s, early 40s, something like that. All of that, all of those transitions go away. You can't really perceive them that well, right? So she doesn't drop when she prepares for pirouette or prepares for a jump or something. You know, it's just very quick, very efficient, very strong. So that, because that's how the system was, they understood how to do that. That's, that is the, the true process in ballet. And it begins your first day of class and it continues until a dancer retires. This is what that is. So continuing to develop strength, well, that process is a very intellectual process and you, you, this is why teaching and coaches are necessary. Necessary. It's not that a dancer can't, to some extent, work on themselves, particularly now that we have the ability to, you can film yourself from profile and so forth and review your, your own work and try to, to, to work it that way. But it's, it's really quite a process of um, first establishing that technique, that strength and coordination, and then 
continuing to refine it. And, and that's just what the process is. So that's the answer to the question. Um, and this is why adding weight, so it, now look, all these things have been tried. These things were tried in the 1920s and 30s in Russia where they added weight vests and weight into the, on the waist and, and then jumped. And so research was done. And what happened was, <laughs> because if you're, if you're in the world outside of turnout and placement, that probably works, I think, right? With basketball players or whoever, you know, you're jumping in parallel, you put a weight vest on, you build muscle to, to do this specific kind of jumping. But when you turn out and you place yourself as required for ballet, that doesn't work. Because bulk, bulking up is in contrast to mobility. And in ballet, because it's about precision of mobility, really precise, really fine motor skills that we don't see almost anywhere else. There's no need for it, right? So if you're playing a normal sport, compared to ballet, it's, it's very, um, like I don't want to insult athletes, but it, it's, it's not precise. It's not nearly as precise as ballet is because it's just not necessary and they're not turned out. So adding weight to your body weight ends up you end up bulking up and what ended up happening in these uh, studies early on was injury. Injury is what comes from that. And again, once, so we're demonstrating all this and it's, it's going to take some time. Like you, those of you who study with our, in our program, you will understand when you feel it in your body. You will understand. So think about this. I can give an example that might summarize this. So women have to dance on point. And there's a very specific tipping point to where if there's, it's not a question of weight so much. If we're talking about the profession now, it, it's not that if you weigh 123 pounds, let's say, that your feet are going to get crushed on, on point, and so you need to weigh 110. No. The, the ballerines in the Soviet era were, you know, 125, 135. I mean, these were normal size women, and they were fine because of the precision of their execution, the way that their weight was organized over the point shoe. So it's, we end up talking about your axis. There's an axis, it's 360, right? So you look to the front, you look to profile, you look from the back, and there's an axis, and the precision of that axis is what makes you safe on a point shoe. So, but let's say you, you put a weight vest on and you do cross training, you're gonna develop muscle, bulk muscle. So instead of refining and reshaping, you're, you're adding muscle where you don't want it and that creates instability and that creates injury and that's what has happened for the last 30 years in America especially. And then of course, that, that misunderstanding has been exported all over the world in ballet. So th th this is why we have this crisis. Uh, in addition to the crisis we're living through Ballet has its own, and that's what this is. So, look, brilliant question. Chris is, is the, the, the man's name. Um, and that's as well as I can describe it in words. As I said, uh, for those who enroll in the Institute and really work this program, you will understand in time what is, I think, from the outside perspective, really counterintuitive. But from a person with an expertise in this, well, this is what it is. So anyway, that's the answer to your question.